In this video, we'll be describing the role of the four layers of the TCP IP stack, describe the role of sockets in the TCP IP stack, and be familiar with the role of the media access control address. We'll be covering a number of protocols in these videos, but arguably the most important is the TCP IP protocol. Now technically these are two protocols, but they're so commonly put together that we just refer to them as TCP IP, and that's the Transmission Control Protocol and the Internet Protocol. As I stated, this is one of the most important protocol stacks in use today. Any device running the TCP IP protocol can communicate and transfer data across a network and out across the internet. It's a set of networking protocols consisting of four distinct layers that all work together. And for the exam, you need to know what each of these four layers here do. All incoming and outgoing data packets pass up and down through the various layers when you communicate on a network. So we're going to go through these layers in a bit more detail, but very abstractly, first of all, here we have a source computer that wants sensor communication to this destination computer. On the way out, it travels down through the TCP IP stack, with the various rules of each layer being applied one at a time. Once it reaches the link layer, or layer 1, it gets sent on to the first router, where it moves up to the network layer and down, we'll explain why, through any other routers that are required, and when it reaches the destination computer, it travels back up through the protocol stack. So we're going to take a, a detailed look now at the TCP IP stack and the four layers you need to know about. We're going to pass the following message down through the layers of the TCP IP stack to see what happens to it at each stage before it gets sent out on the network. So this is the message. Computer system analysis is like child rearing. You can do grievous damage, but you cannot ensure success. So imagine this message was being sent out on the network. It first has to travel down through the TCP IP stack. The first layer it has to go through is the application layer. And as the name suggests, this layer uses an appropriate protocol relating to whatever application is being used to transmit the data. So in our example, we're going to pretend this is a web browser. So that protocol could be HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, and these are protocols we're going to cover later on. So you can see there's the original message and a header, which in real terms will be additional ones and zeros are added to this packet of data, so we know what application it is that needs to process this at the other end. We then pass this down to the transport layer. The transport layer is the layer which is using the TCP part. It's responsible for establishing an end-to-end -end connection. Once the connection is made, it splits the data to be transmitted into packets. Now, this message is so short, it probably wouldn't really be split into packets, but we're just doing this as an example. But typically, a data transmission could be quite large, and it will split it into a number of packets. It adds to each packet the number of the packet, packet one, the total number of packets, one of three, and also the port number the packet should use. So we can see these have all been split up now, and this additional data is kind of wrapped Think of it like a pass the parcel. This extra information has been wrapped around the information which was already wrapped from the application layer around the original message. Why do we need to number the packets? Well, this comes back to packet switching, which we covered in the last section. There's a good chance that these packets may arrive at the destination computer out of order. And the sequencing numbers added by the transport layer allows the receiving computer to reassemble the packets in the correct sequence. Now we're done they get passed down to the network layer. Now the network layer uses the IP part called the internet layer. It adds to each packet a source IP address and a destination IP address. And we can see here that our data we got from the transport layer has been wrapped up again with some additional information and this information says the source IP and the destination IP. All routers operate on this layer which uh, is sometimes thought of as layer 4 in the bigger model 
and the routers use the IP address to know the destination the packets are going. Now, it's also important in this section to understand what we mean by a socket. Well, an IP address, so the destination IP address, 47222245366 here, plus the port together makes a socket. And once you have a socket, then when you receive a packet, you know what device the packet is going to, that's the IP part, and you also know what application on that device needs the packet, and that's the port. We're going to look a little bit more at ports uh, in some subsequent videos in this section. Finally, we pass down to the link layer, sometimes called the physical layer or layer 1. It's the lowest layer of the model. And this represents the actual physical connection between the various nodes. Now this is responsible for adding the MAC addresses. And again, it adds a source MAC address and a destination MAC address. And again, it wraps this information around everything else. These packets can now disappear off. Um, and let's just do a demonstration here. So we've reached the bottom of this link layer. And this packet would then disappear off and it would head towards the first router. The router will strip off the outer uh, packet and pass it up the network layer. The destination IP is still set to here, but this router at this point will now decide where does this packet needs to go. Well it needs to go to this router, so it will add its own MAC address and destination address, and wrap the information back up and pass it on. When it eventually arrives at the destination computer, this packet moves up through the destination's computer TCP IP stack and each layer is removed one at a time as it passed up until eventually the destination computer receives the original data. Now we've mentioned MAC address here and you've probably come across this before and it's important you understand what a MAC address is. Students often get confused between IP address and MAC address. And that's because both of them are used and commonly referred to in networking. And we often uh, label up packets with a destination and a source IP address and MAC address. So what's the difference? Well, IP addresses are logical addresses. And they're able to change. And we're going to look a lot more about IP and what it is later in this section. IP addresses operate at layer 3. MAC addresses are what's known as physical addresses. They never change. And as I've said here, they're actually hard-coded during the manufacturing stage to every single network interface card. And every device that you have that connects to the network or the internet will have a network interface card, although it won't necessarily look like this. If you get a router or a laptop, you can probably turn it over and see a sticker that has its MAC address on. And if you went to the command prompt in Windows and typed in ipconfig slash all, you could get the physical MAC address. It's a series of 12 digit hexadecimal codes. From a MAC address, you can uniquely identify any device. A printer, a mobile, a phone, a router, whatever it is, wired or wireless, anywhere in the world. And the MAC addresses operate on layer 2.